Hi, I'm Beth Callahan. I'm the editor of the WarrenCountyPost.com. And as many of you know or are aware of, we have a presidential election coming up November 5th. Because we've been so bombarded with presidential election information, sometimes we get or often overlook that we have other races that are going on that are being challenged that will impact us at the state and federal level. While none of the candidates running for our local county offices are being challenged, Warren County residents will be choosing who they want to represent them in Columbus as a state house representative and who they'll be sending to Washington, D.C. for a U.S. House representative. Because it is so hard to find out or even know who is running for these positions, I felt obligated as the editor of the WarrenCountyPost.com to give you, the reader, a chance to meet the candidates and also give the candidate a chance to let their voice be heard. Remember, the WarrenCountyPost.com is just a small digital media platform trying to give you, the Warren County, Ohio resident, some local news information the best we can on a very limited budget. So with that said, here we go. Warren County is a sound Today we have with us Laura Marie Davis, and she is running for state representative in the 55th House, correct? Yes. So, Laura, thanks for stopping by. And Thank you for having me. I just want people to get to know the candidates so they have an idea who they should, you know, maybe vote for one way or the other. Um, so how long have you lived in this area? Well, first of all, your district, what is your district? District 55 is? It covers most of Warren County. So if this is the county, it's like a big backwards C. It goes from Carlisle and Franklin over to Springboro, includes Waynesville, and then goes down to Morrow and Mainville. So it's pretty much all of Warren County that's not Lebanon and Mason. So which part of that area do you live in? I live in Clear Creek Township, so I do have a Lebanon address, but I'm kind of right in between Lebanon and Springboro. Okay. And um, how long have you lived in this area? Well, I grew up in Deerfield Township. So I grew up um, in Deerfield Township from the time I was born up and through college, went to Mason schools. Um, I did move out of Ohio for a couple years, lived in North Carolina for a few years, but I moved back to the area in 2021. Um, first moved back to, to West Carrollton, and then last year my husband and I bought a home uh, in Clear Creek Township just a stone's throw from where my parents live. So really happy to be back home. That's good. <laughs> yeah, parents always like their kids to move back yes. home. <laughs> um, what made you decide to run for office? Mm -hmm. I have been working in public engagement for a few years. And so I, I wasn't always someone who was very politically inclined, but I have made something of a living helping people have conversations about tough topics, about political topics. And I think it's so important for us to be able to talk to each other about the things that matter. <clears throat> and so when I moved back to this area, I knew that I wanted to engage in some kind of public service, public engagement. The idea of running for office had crossed my mind. And uh, lo and behold, it wasn't too long before some folks said, hey, you know, there's a, there's a seat open for state representative. Maybe that's a, a chance to, to jump in. And I thought, you know, uh, no, no time but the present, you know, to take advantage of that opportunity and to really help other people see that politics does not have to be this um, kind of toxic, divisive thing that we see on the news. Just talking with your neighbors, with your friends and family about the things that matter, I think is a big part of political engagement. So I want to bring some civility back to politics. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> um, and that's true because uh, 
the state rep that's running, he has termed, I'm not running, but it's in office right now, he's termed out. So Correct. your um, opponent, um, Michelle Tesca, neither one of you have held this position, so you're both. We're both newcomers, newcomers. right, and I think it's wonderful that we have two women on the ballot, two newcomers coming in. One of us will represent the district, so it's, it's exciting. It is exciting. So um, now, what are some of the personal experiences or skills you believe will help you in office? Have you ever had an elected mm -hmm. position before? I have served on appointed local boards. Like I mentioned, I lived in North Carolina a few, for a few years, and I have a background in environmental science, so I served on a local environmental affairs board. And I think, you know, one of the tough things about serving in public office is you have to know uh, a lot. There's a lot of information, and folks will come at you with questions or concerns that you have to be prepared to learn about if you don't know already. And I think a lot of it as well is just knowing how to, to talk to people and especially when folks have concerns or issues that they um, want to bring to you, really knowing how to listen and understand where they're coming from and being willing to, willing and open to creative solutions. Um, you know, if it's a topic that I happen to have an opinion on, well, my personal opinion might not reflect that of you know, my constituents, my fellow community members. So being willing to listen and being open to different perspectives, um, being willing to admit when you don't know something and find the information, find someone who maybe can help you understand something better. Um, that's something I definitely experienced serving on the Environmental Affairs Board. And so I would, you know, look forward to continuing to be open to learning as a state representative. Okay. Um, now, according to Warren County Board of Elections, 70% of the voters, voters who are registered to vote, uh, claim no party. Um, so if elected, are you going to be more, are you, is your allegiance going to be more to your party or more towards your constituents? Mm -hmm. I'm so glad you brought that up because it's, I think, one of the biggest sort of misrepresentations about our politics, this idea that everyone's on one side or the other. In reality, a majority of people are kind of in the middle. I talk to a lot of people who say that they don't really feel particularly represented by either of the major parties. And, you know, personally, I am running as a Democrat on the ticket, but I, I did consider running as an independent, um, you know, to be able to be as true as possible to myself and my values and beliefs. Um, I would definitely continue to do so in office. Again, I think the role of a representative is to represent. And so, um, I absolutely will be listening to the concerns and, and values that folks bring to me and use that as the, the sort of guiding star for, for how I would lead. Um, both parties are kind of divided right now in their policies, but mm -hmm. I mean, the Republicans and the Democrats. So um, running on the Democrat ticket this mm -hmm. time, what do you think is something really positive that the Democrats ticket holds or policies hold and something you would say like you would really maybe like to see changed um, mm -hmm. there's you know one of the reasons I did decide to run you know affiliated with the Democratic Party is that the Democratic Party has its platform positions at the same time I do think there's a lot more um, there's a lot more openness and flexibility for candidates who are within the Democratic Party to kind of go out on a limb a bit and, and maybe, um, you know, promote or suggest policies that are a little different to what other, you know, what folks in leadership would, would want to see. So that flexibility and openness to be able to, um, you know, stay true to my beliefs and, like I said, seek creative solutions that may be different from what other folks in the party would, would look for um, is, is something that I really value and respect. Um, I feel like I maybe got away from the question a bit. Did that <laughs> answer it? <laughs> um, I, I was just, is there any particular policy that you're like, you really think is great that the, the platform that they have or? I mean, thinking about what applies here to, you know, the state of Ohio and the kinds of things that I would be. Especially being an environmentalist. I mean, <laughs> yeah. yeah like, well, I mean, some of the things that are really important that I hear from everyone I talk to um, is, is concerned about or values our education system. And I know that right now there are um, mostly Republican leaders in, in our state leadership who are trying to sort of 
um, uh, not who may be enacting policies that are taking resources away from public education and sort of moving it in more towards a sort of privatized education system direction. And I, I don't think that's the right call. It's also not something that I've heard that most people want. I think most people here want to invest in our public schools and make sure we have a really strong public education system. So I know that's a priority of the democratic platform that I think resonates with a lot of folks in these communities. Um, there's, you know, there are also, um, there are also some some suggestions out there of changing our healthcare system. Um, I've spoken with people who are very much in favor of what would be called a, a single payer system for Ohio, which would basically take private insurance out of the equation when it comes to our health um, our healthcare system. Um, a lot of folks like the idea of that. Healthcare providers like the idea of that. It's challenging because there's already a lot of um, industry investment in our healthcare system as it is, so it would be a difficult transition, but it's the kind of policy that I think we could, again, look for creative ways to, to get to the result that we want. It might not be easy, it's not something that's gonna happen overnight, but moving towards a single payer healthcare system for Ohio would really benefit the majority of people, and I think give us a lot more stability and access in healthcare in the long term. Um. Let's see. And um, how important is it to you to be bipartisan, to work with the other? And it sounds <laughs> like you're, you're very willing to work with the other side, but let's... Yeah, it's huge. I mean, I think it's the only way we can get things done, right? Um, you can look at any point, a lot of points in our country's history, maybe not all of them, where some of the greatest um, changes and decisions that were made, even the founding of our country, was a, a bipartisan effort. There were a lot of... Um, there was a lot of contention in our first, you know, um, constitutional uh, conventions between different parties, different values, and we found a way to work it out. Um, you know, now today, even at the local to state to federal level, when when things happen, when when policies get passed, when change is made, it's only when the parties are able to come together. So I think you have to have that that perspective going in that you know everyone who is in the state assembly would be my colleagues and I have to be able to to work with all my colleagues even when we have vastly different perspectives. <laughs> now our district that we're in, um, what are some of the things that you would like to see happen that for like Franklin, Carlisle, Springboro, mm -hmm. Waynesville area? What, what as a, if you were representing us, some of the ideas have you had any ideas yet like something you'd like to see happen in this area or changes or you think it's good the way everything's going <laughs> i mean i think there's always room for improvement i think different communities are facing different challenges as well across the board a lot of our communities are seeing a lot of development coming in um, whether that's you know housing developments down in hamilton township and mainville um or you know just development and expansion in general in a place like Springboro that has done a really good job of preserving its historic downtown and not letting that turn into, you know, a, a strip mall. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I think sustainable, um, sustainable development is something that's really important to this, to this county, to this district, looking at, you know, where is it we can take advantage of development and investment opportunities while still maintaining the, the sense of community that, that we, that we want and maintaining um, you know, a, a healthy, well-rounded community for the folks who live here. Yeah. Well, you've answered all my questions. Is there <laughs> anything else you'd like the public to know as they're trying to decide, you know, who to vote for, especially since this is open? I mean, you don't have an incumbent. It's like mm -hmm. so it's some two new faces. So right. what would you like to add that you want the public to know? Is there anything that you would like besides vote for me, I mean, what's that? <laughs> yeah, I think what I'd want to say is that, you know, this this year we're in another, you know, huge presidential election year. And I know that so often politics is dominated by the presidential election, you know, the big splashy stuff on the media, the news, the, the two parties. At the same time, there's so much that we vote for on the ballot at the state and local level that really has a, a more direct impact on our lives that is not so much defined by 
the, the, the politics that we kind of know and hate, you know, there's, I think in a race like state representative, it really is about what are the issues that are important to you? Um, and, and do you feel like, you know, the, the candidate that you're choosing really represents your values? So I would encourage folks to, you know, reach out to me if they have questions, if there's something they'd like to share or like to know about me. And I'm always, I'm always happy to have a conversation. Okay, and I will be putting your information up um, so you can reach out to her to be able to ask questions, and I'm sure you'll respond. <laughs> um, so, and thank you again for stopping by, and, and thank you for running. I know um, elections are really hard. Uh, the campaigning time puts a lot of stress, and so um, I applaud anybody that throws their hat in and runs. It's Thank you. Well, thank you, and thank you for helping to get us good local news. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, and we'll see you again soon.